Okay, so we want to put a keyway in this part, all right? So if the problem you're going to run into when you go draw this up is basically when you create a sketch, it's going to give you a few options, right? You have different planes to, to sketch on. Uh, I have this plane, this plane, and this plane, right? Um, now, there's two ways to do this. It doesn't really matter which way you do it. Uh, before I learned how to use the offset tool and uh, basically offset offset a plane, I what I did was I just selected this uh, this inside plane right right here. Okay, so from a top view, everything looks fine. But if we actually draw up some geometry, what you're going to see is it's going to draw it in the middle, right? Like, if I come over here and draw a circle, you know, the circle's in the middle of the part, right? So, so there's two ways to do this. Uh, what I used to do, uh, let's look at this print real quick. Okay, so we have a keyway. It's going to be a half, it's a half inch key, and it starts a quarter inch from the edge of the part, and it's one and a half inch long. Okay, so with that said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put this in top view. And we got a half inch key. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to draw a half inch circle. 0.5. And it starts a quarter inch from the edge, right? Okay, so... Notice when I did it a quarter inch, notice it brings the circle up to here, right? That's because the edge of the circle is a quarter inch quarter inch from the edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click right here and make this 0.5. Right? So if we were to measure the distance from here, now... Okay, I actually measured it. Sometimes it won't want to measure the edge of a circle. Um, but in the most recent, in some of the recent updates, they've been, they've been working on that. Because, uh, you know, before the updates, it would, it would grab the center point of the circle and dimension that from the next, you know, selected element. So that's one thing you have to watch out for. Okay, so it's an inch and a half keyway. Now, that's an inch and a half from the edge of the keyway to the other side or to the other edge. Okay, now because we're, um, you know, you position circles based off the center point. Um, so basically, you know, it's a half inch key, so the radius is a quarter inch, right? Uh, if you're going to have an arc, on this side of the keyway, on the right side, you're going to have another arc. Uh, basically, what you're going to do is this simple math, but I'm just making sure you see how I'm calculating this. Okay, so, so basically I'm going inch and a half minus 0.25. Minus 0.25. So it's one inch, right? Alright, so with that said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and my reference off this circle, draw another half inch circle, and I'm going to dimension these one inch apart from each other. So we're going to select this and this. Let's try that again.
All right, so we're going to make this one inch. All right, and the right circle moved and not the left. That's because the left circle is already constrained with this dimension right here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and connect these two arcs. And, and you can use a slot tool as well. And I'm going to trim this up. And you don't really have to trim. I just like trimming it because, you know, when I started using CAD, you always had to trim your geometry before you uh, extruded it or used it to uh, do any kind of 3D features. Um, now, you don't have to do that nowadays because the software has gotten a lot better. Uh, but I still do it because, I don't know, it's, it's kind of a habit and it's, um, it just looks cleaner. Um, okay, so the shaft is two and a half inches, and we get a half inch key, right? So, the way this works is on keys basically, when these parts get assembled, the key is going to be you know, if it's a half inch key. Half of the key is going to be in the bushing, and the other half is going to be in the key seat of the shaft. All right? So it's kind of, you know, it, whatever, whatever the width of the key is, you're pretty much going to just divide that number by two, and that's going to be your depth, right? So that said, if we have a two and a half inch OD, And we're working off the center, okay? So I'm going to divide that by 2. And that's, that's because my sketch plane is in the middle of the part, you know? Okay, so that would be the distance from the center to the top of the shaft. Uh, right here. So... Okay, so from the center to the top of the uh, the shaft diameter, it's one and a quarter. So the key is going to seat, you know, it's going to sit down a quarter inch in. So the distance from the center of the shaft to the floor of the keyway would be one inch, basically. And usually this is quicker. I'm, I'm kind of explaining things. So, you know, I would usually do this a lot faster. But this is the way I used to do it. So what I used to do is I used to go to extrude and cut up, right? Now, obviously my keyway is too deep right there, right? So what I would do is then go to extrude again and then extrude it up one inch right so the distance of this floor to this outer edge of the uh, the diameter of the part uh, should be a quarter inch i'm gonna go ahead and save this okay so that's one way of doing it uh, that, that was before I learned how to do it uh, the proper way. I um, can't really say if it's proper, but it's the way that Fusion 360 designed the software to be used. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do... I'm going to go ahead and delete this. I'm going to redraw it. So if you forget how to make an offset plane to create a sketch on, because you know the problem, the problem we're having is when you go to create a sketch, you know it's wanting to base that sketch off the center of the part, right? And the dimensions that we have to to create our keyway, they're based off the top of the part, right? So you get do the math backwards and just draw it up from the center and do it in a few steps, you know, where you, you extrude cut it, and then you change the depth of it. 
or the way Fusion 360 uh, kind of intended this to work is you have these uh, construction planes, and there, there's all, all different there's different types and tools um, in here. The one we're gonna use, you know, we could maybe use that tangent plane. Um, the way I've always learned how to do it is use the offset plane. All right, so. The first, so basically, we're going to create a plane that's offset from another plane. Um, so, so I turn on the offset plane. The first thing it wants me to do, it wants me to select a plane to reference off of. Okay. So I'm going to select the plane that I'm going to basically move. I'm not, I'm not actually moving. I'm actually creating an a additional plane, but. So I have this right here, right? And I want a plane on top of the part. So it's a, um, it's a two and a half inch diameter part. So I'm going to pull this up one and a quarter. And we'll put this in a side view and make sure to verify we our math was right. And it looks good. So I'm going to hit OK. All right, so I now have a plane on top of the part. All right, now now remember this because you know when you first start using Fusion 360, you don't really think about things like this until you actually have to you know go about drawing something up, and then you realize there's a flaw in your uh, understanding of the process. Okay, so so I got the plane. And if we go over here to construction, notice I have plane one and plane two. Okay, I had drew some stuff previously on this part. We'll, we'll just delete one of these. There we go. And you can rename these as well. You know, like I'm just gonna name this offset plane. I, I don't suggest doing it. Uh, I'm just doing it because I, you know, for some reason I had two planes there. Okay, so the next step is you're gonna go to create sketch, and you're gonna select that new plane you just made. All right. So now if I rotate my model. Notice my sketch plane is on top of the part, right? Okay, so now I can draw that keyway slot up, right? Uh, <clears throat> on the previous sl slot, um, on the previous example, you know, I drew two circles and it connected them and trimmed it up. Um, you also have a slot tool right here too. Uh, I'm gonna base this one. We'll, we'll do. We we'll do over. Huh? Let's look at our options here. So when you look at slot, you have center to center and then overall slot. Okay. So that would be if we look at this keyway. Like, it's an inch and a half keyway, right? Uh, on the previous example, we drew up two circles, so we did our math based off the center of that circle. Uh, now, sometimes it's easier, you know, depending on who drew the print up, or, you know, you know, just the part geometry in general, it may be easier to input the information for the slot based off the overall length, or the center of the arc to the center of the arc. Okay, so, I mean, it's really tr your, your choice, you know. You got a few methods that you can go about to, to draw that up. Uh, in this example, because the overall keyway slot is dimension one and a half, so it has an overall dimension instead of center point to center point, um, because of that, what I'm going to do is actually use the overall slot, right? So I'm going to come over here, and 
and I can worry about the, the distance from the edge of the keyway slot to the edge of the part later. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reference off the center point, and I'm going to click, right? So what I'm going to do, notice, notice I have this um, floating line, or somewhat floating. Okay, so I have an angle dimension, and I have a length dimension, right? So our overall slot distance is an inch and a half. So I'm going to type in 1.5. I'm going to hit enter. And see where it's at 90 degrees. I'm going to ignore that. And I'm going to just move my cursor up. Right. And when I do that, notice it's now giving me the distance for the width of the slot. Right. So it's a half inch keyway. So I'm going to type in 0.5. Hit enter. And we're not through yet, so now we have to constrain this to the edge of the part 0.25 inches. All right, so we have our 2D sketch right here. Um, so it's a half inch keyway, so that means we're going to cut it down. Uh, half that distance. So 0.5 divided by 2 is 0.25. So I'm going to hit E for extrude and I'm just going to cut this down minus 0.25. So there's two different ways to draw a keyway. And it's actually, you know, it's way quicker. I was describing each step and reasons why and giving you different options and stuff. Um, once you learn how to use it, it's pretty pretty quick. I mean, it won't take you long. But that's how you draw a keyway right there. Um, and remember, you can always edit the depth of the keyway. So if I go to extrude, I can click on this floor, and I, you know, I can pull it, make it deeper, shallower. Uh, I'm just gonna move this back to zero. When I actually cut the keyways on the machine, I like to cut them a little bit deeper just to make sure that if for some reason, um, if for some reason we go to assemble it, if it's not fitting together, you know, it, it would prevent that. You know, it would give you a little bit more wiggle room. But, yeah, that's how you draw keyways, um, key seats, or, you know, just slots in general. Um, you know, anytime you draw on the, the outside diameter of a, you know, a cylindrical part, you're going to have to make a offset sketch. Now, you don't have to, you know, that's, that's a typical process. Uh, you can do it the first way that I showed you. But that's it.